and welcome back to another edition of the Watchman War Room with Mark Langfan, our good friend, marklangfan.com, chairman of Americans for a Safe Israel. Mark, you were here last week and you laid out in stunning detail to me, frightening detail, just how serious the threats are at Israel's borders and what a Palestinian state would mean for the state of Israel. Hint, hint, not good. That was last week's show. This week, look, we have some Iranian maps. Now, people at home, you think you know the Iranian threat. Yes, Iran wants a nuclear weapon, but did you know that Iran's ultimate target is not Israel? Israel is a bump on the road to the big prize, us. That's why Iran is developing intercontinental ballistic missiles right now that can reach the east coast of the United States where Mark and I are standing right now. So Mark, welcome back first of all. Thank you. Great for to have you again, back, my Eric. friend. Um, Walk us through this unique topographic map showing Iran, the terrain of Iran, and its neighbors, and, and what it all means. Well, once you understand the topography of really any area, you can really gain a much deeper understanding of why that area, the history of that area. Just to give you, a, sure. for instance, if you see these mountains over here, this is the Alps and the Dolomites. They are really the protection of Rome and mm. the Italian peninsula. And that's why you had an Italian empire, because you had yeah. these mountains protecting it. But now let's go to uh, the east, and all of a sudden, if you look at Iran, you'll understand that the lines on the map are not exactly casually drawn lines. They're, in fact, a mountain range, which acts as really a crown to Iran, in that Iran is rung by these huge mountains. And all you have to do is look at these mountains compared to the Alps, and you actually realize these mountains are higher than the Alps. Wow. So you've got mountains that are ringing Iran, and all of Iran's nuclear facilities are on the inside the inside the crown so of these inside mountains. That they're mountain inside that mountain. Inside that mountain. Very tough to hit. Very tough to hit. Smart thinking by the Iranians, unfortunately. But unfortunately. Shrewd. So now, why is this topography vital? Well, once you understand the topography, you begin to understand where the oil is in the Persian Gulf. We're now going to segue from this map to the resource map okay. of the Middle East. And in specific, we're going to be focusing on this area here. Once you see where the oil and gas is in the various countries, you realize that all of Iran's oil and gas is in the western reaches, the southwest. And the black obviously symbolizes oil. The black is oil. And the oil, red is natural gas. And the red is natural gas. Okay. And when you look at Saudi Arabia, almost all of the oil and gas falls in the eastern part of Saudi Arabia. Similarly with Iraq, almost all the oil and gas falls in the eastern part of Iraq. So what I've done... This is all Iran's turf, basically. Well, what did that, we'll get to that in a second. Because what I've done is I've taken this map and I've blown up the specific portion that I just showed you into this area here. The black gold triangle. Mark, I don't mean to cut you off, my friend. We've got to pay the dues and go to a commercial. This is a great way to leave it. The Black Gold Triangle, what does it mean for the Middle East and America? You sitting there at home, your oil and gas prices, folks. Find out after the break with Mark Lanfan. Don't move. And welcome back to the Watchman War Room. We're joined by Mark Langfan with his amazing maps. And by the way, folks, you can find these maps at marklangfan.com. You see the URL on your screen right now. Check it out, marklangfan.com. Americans for a safe Israel. So, Mark, when we went to the break, uh, you were filling us in on this black gold triangle. What does that mean, and what does it mean for us over here? Well, what it means is as follows. When you look at Iran, almost all of Iran's oil is in here. When you look at, at Iraq, almost all of Iraq's oil is in here. And when you look at Saudi Arabia, almost all of Saudi Arabia's oil is in this small area. Wow. So now really, if you look at it, there's one third, one third, one third. Well, when o uh, President Obama virtually unilaterally retreated from Iraq, yeah. he gave 
almost all of oil, Iraq's oil to Iran because yeah, Iran essentially. is essentially uh, uh, the boss of Iraq right yeah, now. Exactly. Okay. Iran benefited more than anyone from that invasion of Iraq. Iraq is really now a province of Iran. It's an Iranian satellite. It's an Iranian satellite. Right. Okay. So now the only piece left of this puzzle is Saudi Arabia. And why this is important is everything that is going on in the Middle East, of whether course. it's in Syria, whether it's in Egypt. Ultimately, where all of this is the core of the problem and the core of the fight is between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Right. And the real threat to a nuclear bomb, yes, Israel is a threat, but the goal of an Iranian nuclear bomb is to gain this last third of the triangle. Yeah, and Mark, real quick, I mean, this is stunning. 56%, 56%, ladies and gentlemen, of the world's known oil and gas reserves are inside this black One. triangle, 56%. What does that mean for us at home? I don't know, Mark. I don't think that could be good if Iran controlled 56% of the world's oil and gas reserves. As you said before, it would turn OPEC into Iran-PEC. Exactly. They okay. would set the they price of oil. They would be a monopoly. Yeah. And a nuclear gun to the heads of every oil-producing nation. And they'd be ha they not only would have this 60%, 56% of the world's oil supply, but they'd have a nuclear umbrella on top of it. Yes. But now this is where they it gets... They would be a complete powerhouse. 56% of the world's oil, nuclear armed. This, folks, is what a nuclear Iran that is exactly, really means. Exactly. This is not an Israeli problem. Right. It is, is a world, world problem. problem. Wake up. Okay. So now, the next frame is this map shows the black gold triangle, but in addition it shows that most of the, uh, the Shias are a minority in Saudi Arabia, but they are all, there's about 22 million Saudi Arabians, about 2 million Shias. But that 2 million Shias are all sitting right in the eastern provinces. Just so people at home understand, Mark, Iran is a majority Shia Muslim country. S eastern Iraq, where all that oil is, majority Shia. Eastern Saudi Arabia, where, wow, the really big oil reserves are, majority Shia. Iran's goal is to become the Shia powerhouse and the unfortunately Shia caliphate. the Shia caliphate and unfortunately for us 56 percent of the world's oil and gas again lies inside Iran's potential Shia caliphate. But the key is how does Iran use a nuclear weapon to get Saudi Arabia? Which takes us, which to, takes our final us map. to our final map and possibly our most disturbing if you're not disturbed enough at home yet but this is educational, you need to know. Would you rather know or not know? I think you need to know what Mark's sharing. So now, there's two quote-unquote arguments allowing a small number of nukes to Iran. Number one, they have a fatwa, so they're not gonna use it. Number two, oh, what is one or two nukes against a thousand American nukes gonna do? This is what it's gonna do. They can use one nuke as an EMP weapon against Saudi Arabia and then attack which will burn up all of America's and Saudi Arabia's uh, defense electronics. EMP, Mark, just is to remind everyone. electromagnetic pulse. We've talked about it many times here on the show, electromagnetic pulse, EMP for short. Yes. So what happens is you don't ignite the nuclear weapon a kilometer above the ground, you ignite it 50 kilometers yes, above the ground. Yes, in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere. And so, actually... You're in the and, Stone Age. You're in so the 1800s. You're in the Stone Age. But the key fries part, everything. Fries everything. But it takes you back to 900 AD. Yes. Where you'll kill less people. It's a, it's a weapon where you're right. not going to... So, it's actually a fatwa. It's a Sharia-compliant nuclear weapon. Yeah. So, you could... we got to run, Mark, but real quick. You could use an e Iran, which Iran has tested this EMP technology in the Caspian Sea. Iran could use an EMP against Saudi Arabia, cripple Saudi Arabia's uh, electrical grid, everything. Iran marches right in and takes those oil fields in eastern Saudi Arabia. And here we have our Iranian caliphate controlling some 56% of the world's oil and natural gas supplies. 
Mark, thank you so much for breaking it down, my friend. It was thank great you. to have you. Thank Two you weeks in a row, me. we'll have you back. Great. Again, marklangfan.com. You can find all these amazing maps. Show them to your friends. Share them with your family. This is important. You need to know what a nuclear Iran really means. This is not an Israeli problem. It is your problem and my problem, the world's problem. Wrapping up after the break. Stay tuned.